I would say rejection or it's it's hard to take. Yeah. For being released, it might be hard to take. Um, but as I said, you have to keep mentally strong in those situations and then just believe. Okay, this club don't want me, but maybe this club could take me if I keep trying. And you never yeah. know. Maybe a club turning you down that could even put you up to bigger opportunities. You, you just never yeah. know. Yeah, it's you true. just never know. So it depends what type of mentality people have because everyone's mentality is different, as you know. So yeah, yeah, it depends how right. far you want to go in the game and how hard you actually want to work. This, but even in playground or these kickabouts, I mean, I'm taking it serious, bro, because any little thing can improve, you know what I mean? Just yeah, that's true. Find, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes that you can, you can use to improve on yourself, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. imagine you have to study for exams, okay, but like, your mind's football. Find 30 minutes before you study for the exams or after you've done your, just to try and improve yourself and, because any, even 1%, Improvement, yeah. but it can make a big difference in your game. You know what I mean? Right. So it's there's no a contract's not getting getting posted through a letterbox saying, <laughs> "Oh yes, Daniel, you're you're gonna get a professional contract. Sign it, sign it." Sign it. <laughs> you have to you have to work. There's no cutting hard work, bro. That's one thing, man. Definitely that's, not. That's good to hear. So that's a nice little for all of you up and coming players that will you know maybe watching this. As you heard it there, there's no substitute for hard work. You got to keep working hard, not man. At all. The coach knows best. That's why he's he's you're his student. He's he's the teacher. You know what I mean? Yeah, just listen yeah. to him and then see what he has to say. Say your little bit. Come to a thing. Blah 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 blah. And then then it's fine. Like no arguments needed or no confrontation. Then it's just he just wants to help you. That's why he's criticizing you. But it's constructive. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just wants you to do well. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Views from Inside. And this is the podcast where we interview footballers to get their experiences in the game to help inspire and motivate you all, you viewers, to achieve your life goals. Today, I'm pleased to be joined by someone who's only, you're only 23, I believe, yeah, and he's already maybe. played in different countries such as Greece, Sweden, and Germany. He's from England. Um, is Daniel Olaoye. Did correct, I get it right? Man. Correct, yes. boy, correct. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what? I just want to say, yeah, um, since I've become aware of you, the one yeah. thing that stands out is your work rate. Yeah, your work rate is crazy so for any young footballers that are going to be watching or listening to this podcast you have to hit up um daniel on instagram and twitter and just follow him man because his work rate is definitely inspiring appreciate um, that Bowman. so yeah we're gonna put his links in the description we'll at the end of this as well we'll get him to tell us exactly how you can find him but you're doing all right, yeah, Daniel? You're all right? Yeah, I'm all good, man. Just been training, grafting, you know how it is. Grafting and training again. So what, was it a double session today or a triple session? Uh, <laughs> 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 no, today was a single, bro. Today was a single because I, I went quite hard at the beginning of the week. So today's a single, got another one, two more. See. And in the weekend as well, so. All right, all right. So I had to ask that question, people. As I said, he goes hard and <laughs> my man be doing double sessions and everything. <laughs> Um, how how have you found it then during the lockdown, Daniel? Because you've you've obviously from from an outsider looking in, it looks like you've been putting the work in. But how has it been for you during the lockdown? It hasn't been too bad, to be fair. Because like from the off, um, well, you know when we had that one hour of exercise, yeah, or whatever yeah. it was. Um, yeah. So I did. I was doing workouts every day indoors. Yeah, and then. My park's literally a minute down the road, so I would stay there for an hour or more every yeah. day. Yeah, and I have yeah, my yeah. equipment, so it's like it's, it's normal, but it's not normal because I'm not with, I'm not with my team. You know what I mean? Doing yeah, my sessions yeah. with my brothers or my trainer, so I have more time to work on myself. Yeah, yeah. During this period, I would say so. Um, so you think that's been a positive then? Something like yeah. a positive to come out of this? 100%. 100%. Because as, as our season is, is cancelled and we have to wait until next season, so this is the time I have to prepare 
we've had a long time now. How much? How long? Three months in lockdown. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we yeah. have this three months plus. I have until mid July to prepare um, for myself until I go back to Germany. So um, this period is key. Like I can I can improve on a lot of different aspects that I may see myself that I need to improve or that I've been told that I may need to improve just to make sure I'm I'm back hundred percent once I get back. Yeah. Okay, so you said there that you're going back to Germany. So what's your what's your situation at the moment? Because currently at the moment you're in England. So it's yeah. been in England that you've been doing your training. But then yeah. you say you're going back to Germany. So are you playing professionally in Germany at the moment? Yeah, I'm about to... Well, hopefully this move goes through. I'm about to go change clubs in Germany. So Okay. Um, hopefully it goes through and then um, we start from there. I have a few dates that I have to meet certain clubs yeah. in different cities in Germany with my agent but um, I haven't accepted one because I see some as maybe it's a higher level but maybe I won't play okay. I see some maybe it's a level a step up and I will play and I can even jump two steps up or a step up the yeah. season after or in January who knows but wherever I play now I just want to give 100% and stay injury free so as I've been training a lot I'm surprised I haven't got any injuries during this period because I've yeah. been I've been training hard, but I've been recovering hard, also learning how to recover good as well. Okay. So I guess this lockdown teaches us different ways and techniques to recover and make sure your body's just hundred percent to go the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned earlier about brothers. You're you're a twin, aren't you? Yeah, I'm a twin brother. Yeah. And and you've got another brother as well. Yeah, younger brother, he plays in Sweden and my twin brother plays in Norway. But he was the first um, professional English player to play in Argentina. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So good, yeah. so to me, that there must be something in your blood because one one of you is playing in Sweden, first <laughs> English professional to ever play in Argentina, Argentina that's your yeah. brother. And now you're you're in Germany. Like there's because you, as you know, there's there's something that seems to stop English players going abroad. What do you think 100%. is different about you and your brothers? Is it been something that has been taught to you as you've been growing up, or what? What, what seems to be different? Um, I would say it started from like, well, I had opportunities here in England, but this was during my secondary school period, and my parents were fairly strict on education, so I, I didn't have I had interest from Sheffield United because we went to like and an elite centre in East London. So, okay. boys that have played for Palace, Norwich, Southampton, top uh, top academies that have been released all yeah. come to this centre. Okay. We'll train Monday, Wednesday, um, Friday. Some days we have, like, during the half-term when we were in school, we had games against Reading, Sheffield, Norwich. I had interest from Reading also. Yeah, I had interest yeah. from Sheffield United with a guy who currently works there called Travis Binion, I believe. He works still at Sheffield United. So Okay. But um, all that, you know, with day release and all that, I would have to be missing school. Yeah, yeah. So um, with my parents being strict on education, <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had to try I had to try and knuckle down at school. But I know that, I know what I wanted would, would eventually come. Mm. But um, maybe it won't go the way that people say go through the academy and this and that it's not always the best way to go through the academy as well okay that's interesting to as hear. i've seen a lot of my friends at that okay. age currently looking at them now none of them play none of okay. them play that have been released from clubs maybe a, maybe one or two i think are currently playing but yeah yeah they've been released from academies from a young age they've lost complete motivation and just haven't played anymore Mm. And what is what do you think that is down to? Is it the them not being able to deal with the the being released from clubs and 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 that journey trying to then move to another club and getting knocked back? Do you think that's what it is? Ooh, I would say rejection. Or it's it's hard to take. Yeah. For being released, it might be hard to take. Um, but as I said, you have to keep mentally strong in those situations and then just believe. Okay, this club don't want me, but maybe this club could take me if I keep trying and. You never know. Maybe a club turning you down, that could even put you up to bigger opportunities. You, you just never yeah. know. Yeah, it's you true. You just never know. So it depends what type of mentality people have because everyone's mentality is different, as you know. So yeah, yeah, it depends how right. far you want to go in the game and how hard you actually want to work um, yeah, yeah. to do what you want to do. Brilliant. So 
at the moment, um, we as a, you know, we sponsor some grassroots football teams. I sponsor um, under 10s and under 13s. And yeah. um, Rippleway is one of the teams that we sponsor in East London. And they, East they have, London, yeah. yeah, they have different categories under 10s, 11s, 15s. So I actually put it out to them to ask a few questions. So I'm going to do something different today. I've got yeah. loads of questions from our under 15s from Rippleway AFC. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to ask you some questions from them. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. That's All right. Good. So the first question is, what made you start playing football? And so basically, how did you get into football? Uh, well, I started in primary school. I just, I just loved football. Yeah. Teachers show me with a football all the time, just with a <laughs> football. And then um, I got sent with my twin brother to David Beckham Academy. He had the academy in Greenwich. Okay. Um, I can't remember what year this was, but I think this was maybe 2004, 2003. Yeah. He yeah. had an academy in North Greenwich. He also set up one in America as well. So we got sent there with um, people two years above us. So we got sent as year fours with year sixes. Wow. What, because then you were that talented? Yeah, I was... Oh, I'm, I'm not being cocky, but I was more talented than my brother in the, in, in, in the, in the school. Actually, I don't oh. think the olders were better than me at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just have that thing that Okay, I'm the best, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, you gotta be confident. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But um um went there, then got sent two years after two year six. But this yeah, was yeah. like a camp, so it was like a week or two. Okay. And then um I played against my brother's team and we won, but in the we had a team which was people look at us as the underdogs. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. in that time, like in year six. So I was with another bunch of players that got sent from different schools, different places in England to this centre for two weeks, two weeks. So it was like a tournament. Our team was England. Okay. Yeah, other team oh, Brazil, Netherlands. Yeah. Is it? it was dope. Wow. Yeah, it was good. In the in the I, David the Beckham medal somewhere in my house. I wish I could show you, but yeah, yeah. I have the, I have the gold, I won the gold medal with my team. Serious? Yeah, seriously. I will show, I'll send you a picture after. Yeah, send the, send me a picture, man, and I'll I'll fling that up as well. You know I what would, I mean? Hundred percent. And that. we beat my brother's team. He got he came away with a silver. <laughs> Hey, which which I still hold to him to this day. <laughs> <laughs> if he's watching this, we can have a little laugh at him and see yeah, what he's saying. And, um, so, what so team was he? Because you were playing for England then. So, who was he representing? In I believe he was USA. Okay, so it just so it wasn't necessarily that you had to be from that country. They just no, gave you a different. Okay, yeah, I, I, I get it. I get but it. But if I remember. You, they had some players, you were saying, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had some players. Like, it, was, it was a very, very good standard at that age. Very good standard. Man. Do you remember anybody that played there that has turned pro now that anybody listening would, would know of? No, like, I, I know their first names, but yeah. I don't know their second Surname. names. Surname, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing, man. Calm, that's but, calm. Um, then after I went to secondary school and joined a team called Junior Hammers, which they were linked with West Ham because me and my brother didn't know about this academy thing until maybe 14, 15. We just played. Okay. We just played, played, played. And until one of our friends from Junior Hammers, because it has a link with West Ham. Yeah. He got signed with Junior Hammers. He still plays now for Cambridge, Kyle Neuer. He's from East London as well. Okay. Um, he made his first team debut for West Ham, I believe, a few years ago. So when he got in Junior Hammers, we were like, okay, we need to step up. We need to try to get into this academy. <laughs> 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 so we were like that. And then... Um, we joined this elite pro sports, which I was talking about, like the elite centre. Yes, yes, yes. In East London, um, based in West Ham Memorial, ran by Lester Thomas and Clem. Okay. Which were my coaches there. Also, Ashley Young's dad used to come, Luther Young. He used to attend every session with that. Oh, all, all right. So um, the standard there was high. Even Ashley Young's brother used to come. His name's Carl Young. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. He used to come as well. I think he played for Watford at the time and then he was at Arsenal for a bit, but... The standard was the standard was high. They were like, okay, these are uh, it's a step up from Junior Hammers. The standard is is high. Serious step up from Junior Hammers, yeah. Proper man, proper, proper, proper. So that and was then good. A step up in terms of in Junior Hammers, it was a Sunday league, but in this it was a Sunday league. But we went out to play academies. Okay, you know what I mean, okay. So we had that academy. Um, how do you say? Even though we weren't in a professional academy, we were in a yeah. team that plays academies that give us that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, went there, played then to, I believe, under 16. Um, then th the team that was 16 and 17s 
the old with the old lot, um, we played for Newham. Okay. Essex Senior League, I believe, then. Essex Senior, when we were 16, 17, that age. So yeah. it was like the change from um, Sunday League football to men's football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it's, 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 quite, it's quite big on us, um, how do you say, physic, physicality. Yeah, yeah, physicality, yeah, yeah. Like, we, were playing against, we were playing against men week in, week out. <laughs> so that helped, that helped yeah, you, though, isn't it, going cool. forward? 100%, because I said to my brother, if we played 16, 17, 18, you know how you get a score and you play 16, 17, 18, yeah, so you'll be yeah. playing under 18. You're not playing against men. You're playing yeah, against yeah. kids. Or, the, same, or, the same age as you and that. Exactly. So I said, playing against men, it's, it's definitely helped me now. Like, it's, it's toughened me up from that young age yeah, yeah, to be yeah. ready to go. So I was hoping, hopefully, I play 16, 17, 18. Once I finish my college, go into a professional environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, them years, well, how do you say, um, it built us for that thing coming that we were thinking of, okay, it could happen, it could happen, it could not, but we were prepared for it anyway. You were prepared, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. And then um, a guy called Costas Kiasos played for Panathinaikos, has also played against in Wembley against Arsenal in the Champions League as well, in, this guy. Yeah, yeah, okay. So he, was, he was in London at the time, but he was attending our centre. Because he had a few agents that were coming to watch our, some players, blah, blah, this and that. Watched me and my brother the whole season at Newham and said, he needs to take both of us to Greece. Okay. So that, that was when we were like, okay. This was, this was at 18. We were supposed to go from the time we were 17, you know, but we yeah. were at college. And okay. plus, I had, to, I had to finish college and... You know, because yeah, your, your parents, <laughs> <My> parents. <laughs> yeah, you had to finish. <laughs> <laughs> but I always knew at the back of my mind, okay, that like, this can be a stepping stone. Okay. So I took us um, to his old club, um, off he Crete first. Then we went to a team called AOT and we got signed there. That's, that's men's. So Crete was an under 20 and then AOT was, was men's. It was, was men's. men's. It was professional level in professional. Greece. Okay. That was. Oof. The first preseason there, bro. If I was, I was baking. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. How's it? What's it like playing in in a hot country like that? Bro, the thing is that they had they had the beach. So it was like, okay, this life is good, but yeah, you yeah. have you're working in this heat as well. Yeah, yeah. So you can work hard and then you yeah. can enjoy like. Yeah, but yeah. It's a preseason period and come up to season, so you still have to stay focused. If you yeah, know what of I mean. course, of course. So it's controlled course. or monitored by yeah. itself, if you want to say. Yeah, yeah. And then. Um, and uh, that was the, that was probably one of the hardest pre-seasons in terms of the climate was I, it was very hard for me to adjust to straight away yeah yeah I could imagine man 100% and, then, and was your brother there with you at the same time yeah me and my brother both got signed to this club okay so I had I had someone there it's not like okay my family's all in England I had my brother there yeah yeah and yeah and then my mum ended up coming as well I really, she came for about two weeks. I remember the first setting in there, so that was good as well. Yeah, yeah. And I checked that everything was okay. She fully trusted my dad and my mom. Fully trusted the guy when he took us there, and just hoped that okay, let's hope these boys get signed. Uh, like, yeah, that's all they've wanted to do, like all their life. Like this education thing, I wasn't too big on it, but <laughs> you know, you know what I mean, bro. But, yeah, of course, man. I know, I know. Like, I need okay. I need, I need this football thing. Like, I need to get it. So. I knew when I went up there, I knew I would give 100% and come up with positive news, which I did. So the thing is, I've got a question here. Um, and it's, it's how did you balance, how did you balance foot with, you know, between football and education? How did you do that? Um, shall I start from when I was at secondary school? Yeah, man. Like how, how, how was because obviously you've got parents that want you to um, yeah. focus on education, but you want to focus on football. You know, yeah. I'm speaking to, you know, I speak to a few young footballers now and, and that's something they find difficult to balance the two. So how, how, how well, do you... I believe that if we're in school, let me say, focus and then sort of like play play time or lunch time or yeah have you call it in secondary school like yeah yeah that's when I'm, that's when as soon as this lesson's finished i'm out with a ball yeah i'm okay. out with a ball so i have to say okay let me let me try to do this focus on this but 
even in playground or these kickabouts that we, I'm taking it serious, bro, because any little thing can improve, you know what I mean? Just yeah, that's true. Find, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes that you can you can use to improve on yourself, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. imagine you have to study for exams, okay, but like, your mind's football. Find 30 minutes before you study for the exams or after you've done your, just to try and improve yourself. And because any, even 1%, improvement where yeah. it can make a big difference in your game you know what i mean but i mean you just have to try and balance the two like if you want to also succeed in education as well but i don't okay but i didn't say i wouldn't say i would ace it no way but yeah, yeah i done yeah. what i could but yeah, i knew yeah, what yeah. i wanted what so, you wanted yeah so there's it just other depends footballers how people's parents are boy it just yeah. depends yeah yeah there's other um footballers that i've spoken to that have talked about having that tunnel vision um, in terms of trying to be a footballer. They knew what yeah. they wanted and they've yeah. gone hard for it. And 100%. I get from you is that you have proper worked, worked hard to, to get where you've got to. And obviously it hasn't stopped yet. You, you're, you're still on your journey. 100% because I believe even if, imagine I got the scholar 16, 17, 18. To me, a scholar is nothing. Because you play under 80s football, a lot, there's thousands of kids get they get released every year and end up having no club. Yeah. But it's yeah. when you get, so you have to carry on that hunger and that work rate. Because I know, I know some players personally that they've have a scholar now. Yeah. And they're chilled, relaxed. Some have even got released. Some have even got released. So in my head, I'm saying, okay, you didn't listen when someone was telling you to work hard yeah. and this and that. And now you're seeing you're struggling for a club, this and that. But if you thought back, okay, a year ago, I need to go hard. So follow in from that scholar into a pro when you got yeah. a pro you're secured and you still have to put in more work yeah 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 that's right so it's, there's no a contract's not getting getting posted through a letterbox saying <laughs> oh yes daniel you're, you're gonna get a professional contract sign it sign it, sign it. <laughs> you have to you have to work there's no cutting hard work bro that's one thing man definitely that's, not that's good to hear so that's a nice little for all of you up and coming players that will you know maybe watching this as you heard it there, there's no substitute for hard work. You gotta keep working hard, man. And when when did you um when did you first then get scouted? So I had a question from Romario. When did you first get scouted? So how did you get picked up to even go to the David Beckham Academy? Because I guess it all spiraled from there, didn't it? Oh well, it came from um like the head of PE in our school. Okay. So he was like, these that have to go. He sent another boy with us, but the time that we went in year six, I don't, he didn't go, it was just me and my brother. Yeah. So this guy, even we still speak to him <laughs> to this day, you know. The, Serious? The guy, yeah, yeah. And is he even, playing? Nah, he's, uh, I mean, the, the, the PE teacher that sent Oh, us the PE yeah. teacher, okay. Oh, that's yeah. wicked. Yeah, but we still speak to him to this day. So, like, he's, he's, he's proud now, isn't it? But, like, he's the one that said, okay, these boys are going there. Like, he knew, he just had something that, Okay, these boys are good, you know what I mean? Bro? He so, saw something, he saw something. Percent, yeah, sure. And um, I believe there is, there was like a little motivation that, like, okay, this is David Beckham Academy, it's quite big. David Beckham is no ordinary name, bro. Like, it's, mm. it's quite something big, you know what I'm saying? So we just have to make the most of every opportunity you get. But to get scouted from a professional club, mm, the first time I believe was 14, I think. 14. Okay. 14 by Sheffield United. Oh, Sheffield thanks. United or Reading came first. One of them came first because I remember it was an October half term. I can't remember what year. But we went down to Sheffield. Bro, I destroyed them. When I get the tape, I, I have the DVD, you know. When I get the tape, I'll send, I'll send you the video. Yeah, man. I want to see this. Bro, this, I got my, and then I was sleeping on the way back. So we had a thing, whatever. We lost the game, I believe, 3-1. For well, first 15 minutes, we didn't see the ball. Yeah. They, I was like, okay, this is the level, bro. Wow. And then after, um, I remember I was playing on the same side as my brother because um, back in that time, I think I believe he was playing as a fullback. And I was, so he was a right back, right yeah. fullback, and I was the right forward. Okay. So I was like, me and my brother have to get, try to get stuff ticking on this side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and then on the way back, I knew I had a good game, but on the way back, I'm on the coach sleeping and then, our coach is announcing the man in the match, man in the match, and everyone says, Daniel, and everyone's shaking me on the bus. And I'm just like this, I'm bah. <laughs> See, so you got man of the match when you played yeah, at Sheffield, I got man yeah? Of the match. I was bah, 
bro. I was sleeping. That game finished me. It was shaking. <laughs> wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. <laughs> bro, that was a good experience. That's when I knew, okay, I can match these lot. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. Um, that gave you the confidence to believe in 100%. yourself. And when, um, I believe a few days later, he said, Trim, Travis Binion was the guy's name, is interesting you, like he wants you back. And I believe a month later, because I couldn't attend it, there weren't another player back as well, which we had. He doesn't, he doesn't really play anymore now, but um, they had a few interests in some players that we had because we, we got popped. I would say we had chances, but their, their, their professional club, they just took, took their chances, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were sharper. If, if yeah. that's the right word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that's that, that was that was remember. And Reading, I didn't start this game because um, a guy who runs it brought some other boys who have a bit who are, who are from academy. So okay, he was like, okay, like let me put these lot in. They've played academy football. They know the standard. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I didn't play this game, so I came on. I remember we played three thirties. I came on midway through the. So, like, maybe the 60th minute in that game. Okay, okay. The first one, I did pick the ball up. I ran all of the defenders, bro. All of the defenders. One guy even plays now in championship. His name's Tanai Watson. He plays okay. right now in championship. Yeah, I yeah. breezed past him. I hope he watches this. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you still speak to him? Yeah, I speak to him, but um, not too much. That I spoke yeah. to him close to that time when we played against him. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's another unbelievable player called Noor Hussain. Unbelievable player. He plays, I believe he, he dropped down the league. He plays for Dartford now, but he still plays for his national team. Um, another guy called Fumnaya. Played for Barnet. Ugh, what what a player this was. He has he has no club now, but this guy was a player. Okay. I said, the way this guy's cutting our defenders, like, this is serious, this level, bro. <laughs> and how old was you then? 14? Um, 14, 15, I believe, 14, yeah, 15. 15. And wow. then I said, okay, these lot, these lot are working on my eyes, but the ball that, the way that ball is zipping is... Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, but I came on and, and done my done my bit, and then after, on the way home, of course, I said, yeah, they want you back. They want you back on, I believe, the following week. Went for a game. Um, went for a game. I, th- I believe we played Aldershot that day. We played okay. Aldershot, went back, we're supposed to go in for training, but um, that's day really, isn't it? So it's in the middle of school, and my, my parents wouldn't allow Couldn't. me. So that was it. That oh. was it, really. There was another guy who I still speak to him. He's the guy that drove us. His name's Charles. Like he even asked me what what's happening now. Did I think I spoke to him? Um, not not too long ago. Not too long ago I spoke to him, and then he's always used to keep in contact with me. Like yeah, yeah what's yeah. happening? Like hope you're doing well. Hope you end up playing in England one day and he was one positive guy about me. Like he this guy about me was he was his opinion about me was really strong. So I believe that I left a good impression. impression. Yeah. That yeah, I left yeah. that I was there anyway. So yeah, it was good man. It was it was a very good experience man. I remember those games that like it was yesterday. Wicked, wicked. So what was the first team called um that you played for? This is a question from Rio at Ripleway. Um, the first team I played for, like, when I was young. Yeah, properly. Junior Hammers. Junior Hammers, yeah. Yeah, so that was that after, one. that was as I left, as I left primary school. So, like, in year seven. And how old was you at that time? Uh, year, year seven, seven you're like, 11, 11, 12, isn't it? Yeah, 11. 11. 12. I'd, like, I, I played for another team, but I wouldn't say I really played for them because I just went to some sessions and this and that. Like, it's my coach that trained me right now. Yeah. So yeah. he he coached the, oh, what was the name of the team? Like they were old as well, but obviously yeah, I knew yeah. him, so I just used to come and train and this and that. Um, with and him, and so. you're still working with him now? Still now, bro. Wow. Still now, but like even he says, um, some players he's coached. Yeah. So he'll coach some players. They'll go away like to coach these to these other coaches. And they'll come back a worse player, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen it with my own eyes. Like I've seen them go. That I see them in the session. I said, okay, these are ballers. They go away. Like I haven't seen them in time. Like imagine I'm a, I'm a board or something. I come yeah, back. You come back and then yeah. I see these dot train, and I was like, this is not the same player I was seeing. But I see it's because they've left 
to me, my coach is good. That's why I've, I've stayed with him for so long, bro. Since yeah. nine. Yes. Um, since nine. Okay. Since nine. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't just go to any other any other coach like that because I know he knows what I'm good at and what I'm not. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like even some of my games, I'll send him some of my games. He knows what I'm good at or what I'm not, as I'm and, saying. And then what you can work on to improve your game. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And he's watched me. You can say he's watched me grow. Bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I mean, yeah. so um, yeah, like since since I still train with him now. I'm, I'm training with him tomorrow even as well. <laughs> what, how how is it? I'll say trying to listen to constructive criticism is is that hard how have you got over that well at hurdle? the beginning i found it hard man you yeah. know he used to tell me i used to i used to hold the ball for too long <laughs> <laughs> you're one of them greedy players isn't it? trying to, to do all your skills <laughs> of him, but if we were even talking about last week he said daniel remember i used to tell you even same with ashley and his dad luther young yeah he used to tell me twinny you hold the ball for too long like give the ball like this is what will stop you having injuries Okay. Like they both used to tell me, but I was like, "Nah, man, let me do what. Let me do what. This is when I was yeah. younger. Like, let younger, me do what. Yeah. I but um, like now, bro. When I went to Greece, like what was it? The first four weeks. The fifth week, I believe, I got injured. It was an ankle injury, but then I kept having these little injuries. One week, two weeks, three weeks. That like, it was because of the. But well, I like dribbling. Yeah it's, not, yeah. it's not that's part of my game. Okay, let me just do what I wanna do. Like let me do my dribbling and let me hold the ball or take the mick out of players, but it wasn't helping me as I saw so I was getting injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's what my coach said, he said, Yeah, now you know until you're going to, until you went to Greece and you're getting kicked up, now you listen to me. So <laughs> his his what he said was right, but um yeah, I take now I take constructive criticism. I would say probably for the past for the past three years I've taken it. More than that. More yeah, than that. Yeah. Four years I've i t- I've taken it on the chest and just worked. And that's just it. Worked on that's it. That's what you can do. Yeah, hundred percent. I know it's difficult for these young ones to listen because they're like, Oh no, I can do this, I can do that. But the coach knows best. That's why he's he's you're his student, he's he's the teacher, you know what I mean? Yeah, just listen yeah. to him and then See what he has to say. Say your little bit. Come to a thing. Blah 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 blah. And then then it's fine. Like no arguments needed or no confrontation. Then it's just he just wants to help you. That's why he's criticizing you. But it's constructive. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just wants you to do well 100%. and improve. Definitely. What, what was um? Do you remember what it was like playing your first professional football match in front of like a crowd? Oh, this is a yeah. question I from my brother, bro. from from Chris. I played it with my brother. Um, that was at home. It was beaming. <laughs> was this in in Greece? Yeah, bro. Okay. It was in Greece, and um, that I, I had a good game that game, though. That was my first game. That's when me and my brother left like a good impression on these. Like, okay, because yeah. preseason games, um, we would play, 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 but it wouldn't be okay. You're playing. The whole game, like you know, I'm preceding this interval, so you play 45, yeah, next yeah, 45 yeah. Come. that's it. Then a different play, set of players come on, and 100%. all that stuff, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's what it was. So, me and my brother started that game. That that was my aim to start to start my first, first game, that game of the played. season, yeah, yeah. I had to wait for my paperwork, um, from England to Greece, and I had to get everything translated. It was, it was a hot period, it was a difficult period that I just had to wait. So, I missed two games, I believe, but then me and my brother started the same game. Our first game, bro, and we both played well. We last when we left a good impression. It, it was a game, man. So it was game you back. playing on the right wing and and your brother on yeah, the right, exactly, right yeah. back? Yeah, he was. No, I was playing on the right. My brother was playing on the left. Cause oh, within the years, my brother changed as a winger. I, I okay, him as a winger, but he said, "Let me just try this right back position." This was back in the day. Yeah, let me yeah. just try this position, but. Well, I could see my brother as a ringer. We were on, I was on the right, he was on the left. And wow, the, the twins on, the, on either flank. It was flank. good, man. Twins on the wings. <laughs> yeah, twins on the wings. Did you not win the game? Bro, it was nil-nil. I had ah! a chance last minute. I missed it. I missed had, it. You missed the chance last minute? <laughs> last minute. I remember oh. it so clearly. <laughs> but it's dropped. But you know when you receive the ball, you think, okay, I'm in a great position now. And you just get gas in the morning and I'll smack. <laughs> 
<laughs> so but you didn't yeah, have, you lack you lack composure in that moment then basically. Well I lack composure in that moment and then <laughs> I think it was ninety. That was ninety and there was like maybe two, three minutes added. I came off then that like, I missed a chance, um but I was getting fatigued in that game because of that heat. Okay. Came off and then but the coach said he was like really, really pleased with my first game. Like that was it was a it was a proper game, man. I remember every single moment of it. It was a good game still. But I had no nerves. I had no nerves with that game, man. No do nerves. Think, do you think that helps then, the fact that you had no nerves? Yeah, I believe when you get, if you have, get confidence from yourself, of course, first, okay. um, the staff, the, your players, your teammates, the coach, then that just gives you, okay, I can do what I want to do in this game. Like, I, can, I can be my best, you know what I mean? And um, what's it been like, um, Daniel, growing up, obviously, with your twin brother and playing in teams with him, is it like you both push each other to be better? You're in competition with each other, like friendly competition. What, yeah. what, what's it? What's it like between you and your brother? Well, it's it's to be fair, it's good, man. Like even from a young age, like even starting from Dave Beckham, kind of when I won the gold medal and he won the silver medal, like that's yeah, me yeah. coming on top. But <laughs> obviously, he, <laughs> obviously, you wanted to come on top. But um, yeah, like even now, um, we would watch each other games. And say what, like criticize each other, like critique if, each other. Yeah. Okay, yeah. maybe you should have done that past day. Maybe you should have made this one day. Maybe you should have held the ball a little bit longer. Like just this little thing that will make a good, big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even when he was back, when did we last see each other? I believe to Christmas. No, after Christmas break, he was here. So we are back. I think this was Christmas break going into January. Yeah. Had a like maybe two weeks with each other or something before we went back. So. Like, even in training, bro, like, he said, okay, do this exercise 10 times. But I said, no, nah, why don't you do it 15? Or he said, why don't you do it 20? Then? Maybe that's 20, that's 25. Like, you just be pushing each other, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, just, yeah, just yeah. to be better. Or, um, just, challenge, just challenge ourselves. Even during this lockdown period, um, when we were doing, when I came back, and because Norway wasn't too bad, so he didn't, he didn't come back. Okay. So it wasn't too bad, but I came back, and then we were doing when we do workouts, like online workouts or yeah. workouts on face and do each other, even that like push push us during the workout, even it could be difficult, like add another rep, add another two reps, add another set, like just, just trying in every little way, like it still helps, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that, man. One one thing, you, I think you're probably a good player to answer this question. So I've got a question from Luke and he yeah. asked like, what sort of diet do you need when you when you when you become a professional footballer, and I've seen seen you with your supplements and and all of that. So yeah, what what sort of diet? What sort of diet do you work with? And in general, what sort of diet do you need as a professional? But I wouldn't say a hey, like I follow a strict diet. I just don't all this fatty food or unhealthy food. I don't have too much of it. Like maybe okay. maybe what maybe once a week. Maybe that's maybe. Yeah, yeah. But like with all my foods or even if I had that like example I had like some wedges or um something fried or something like yeah I would myself add salads on top of that. You know what seeing, I mean? So seeing, seeing. okay, this is not as bad as it as it as it could seem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? But a lot of cause I train a lot like, a lot of carbs. Yeah. A lot of vitamins is key. Okay. Vitamins is key, man, because um what was it? I believe when I was going to Greece first that's when I said, okay, this, this vitamin thing is key because I'll just be tired. Like, I lacked, I think I lacked iron. iron. Okay, you lacked iron, all right. Yeah, so I had to, I had to keep taking it and then you can see the difference that like, we don't always want to rest or relax. Like, you want to you wanna do something. You don't want to yeah. be lazy, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, having, having a mix of, of things, like have your veg, have your salad, protein, that is key as well, man. That's key as well, and like eating the right stuff can. How do you say? So, example: a player wanted to train all week. Yeah. Does one session on Monday, but says, "I, c- I can't do this for tomorrow." Like, I believe if he eats well. Yeah, yeah. Eats then he... well. He will be able to do that session. See, okay. No Interesting. matter how hard it is. No yeah, matter yeah, how yeah. Hard yeah. <clears throat> like also eating, like um, having your supplements. Is, I think vitamin D is a key one as well. Vitamin D, um, like your um, 
what do you say? Cod liver oil, them supplements there. All of them stuff there, yeah. Vitamin C tablets, like the the dissolvable ones, that that is that's key, bro. Okay. I, I see one thing. Um, I think this is in Sweden. There's one week I stopped taking it. I was tired. <laughs> I was. I had, I had nothing in myself because I used to take it twice every day for 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 days. So yeah. my body's used to this supplement coming in. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And also healthy snacks. I would say. Okay. So like um. Maybe maybe a fruit salad, maybe um, some brown bread as well with some peanut butter or something healthy with some fruit on top of it. Just something yeah, like be yeah. creative with what you can do. And, yeah, yeah, but keep like, it I know, healthy. I know these young ones love this chocolate or whatever, like when they're young, you know what I'm saying? You love, yeah. you love chocolate, you love sweets, you love everything, but if boy, you can replace that with... That's me now, with, boy. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I have to hide, boy. <laughs> Well, if you can replace that with something, something more healthier, yeah, I know you might not like it first, but you'll get used to it. It'll be like a routine to you. Like, okay, I'm making this healthy snack. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Like, it'll just you'll just see your training. You can keep the same intensity. You won't drop intensity. Yeah, yeah. And that your overall, how do you say, your overall game or your body will be better. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. When you're um, playing, so another question from Mitchell. When you're, if we're talking about the normal season, what's your training regime looking like? Is it training every day or is it every other day? How, how does it look? You still there, Daniel? Um, oh, yeah, well, yeah. In Germany, we normally have Wednesdays off. Yeah. Okay. Have you got me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got you in now. In Germany, we normally have Wednesdays off. We have Wednesdays oh. off. Okay. So it'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Sometimes we don't even have Wednesdays off, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be um, not too hard on Monday. It depends when the game was, on Saturday or Sunday or midweek. Okay. I think it just really is around the games or it depends how what the team needs, you know what I mean? But um, like I try to do my own extras every other day. Okay. You know what I mean? Because... I want to see myself, okay, these lot are doing this, but I want to do more. You want to do more. Because I can do more, and plus, I can I can cope with doing more. Like, my body can cope with doing more. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Now, even if we have a, they have a session, we have a session in the morning, maybe I do something after the session or do it in the evening, you know what I'm saying? So, okay, okay. Because I can do more. Or on that day off, I don't just sit around. Maybe do even 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. 30 minutes of working yourself on your day off um, of exercise or of anything that will improve your game is, is, is fine as well. But training's pretty intense as well, man. It, it's really intense. It can be intense sometimes. So, so here we have it, um, young players. He says, even on your day off, be working. Do you know what I mean? This is what he's man. doing to try and improve, to try Bro, and you, get you remember ahead. the day on Monday that I was skipping? Yeah, yeah. You know, some, I said to some my crazy coach, skipping. <laughs> I said Monday I'm off. I said to him, Monday I'm oh, off. Oh, see. I was sitting down. I was like, I have, I have energy today. Let me go do some workout for an hour and a half or something. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he was like, I knew you weren't gonna rest. He knows you too well, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at the moment, how often are you training? But every day. Every day. I haven't had one day off this week. Not one. Wicked. And and I can tell you, people, I've seen it myself. He's out You'll here. You keep seeing it, man. You keep he's, seeing it, he's man. He's out here working, man. It's it's really good to see. As I said, if I was a young player trying to make it in the game, and then I'm looking at you putting in that work, and I'm looking and reflecting on myself, I'd have to say, right, am I working as hard as him? Do you know what I'm saying? I'm good, yeah. Because there's always like somebody coming up behind you that's gonna try and t- gonna try and make it. Well, that's how I see it. That's how I see it, hundred percent. Because I'm like, even I'll stay up at night and and watch watch a game or something, and say, okay, let me take. I love Ronaldo, it? so I watch his games or watch his team playing that he played in United or Real Madrid or Juventus. I'll say, okay, even if I get this guy's movement or yeah, something yeah. off the black, like, something I'm like just to keep keep learning. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like or see something he does. Or the, the intensity he does it at and try it in training the next day or yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So like 
that's how I always look at it as well. Like, there's always someone that's that's trying to come up behind you. But I believe that, like, like, as I've been training, like, like mad. I've even some of my boys have come. Oh, you make me feel lazy, man. I need to do more. I need to do this. Like, a lot of them have asked me like to train some of my sessions before I head back. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I believe that's it's good to push people. Yeah, like, I get a lot of messages that oh, you push me. Your yeah, training's insane. Blah blah this and that. How do you eat? How do you recover? How do you build this? How do you do that? So I believe that even if it's one person that is that is helping, bro, that is good. You know what I mean? It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So, um, that's what these young ones do. Just work, man. Work hard and recover. Recover good as well. Hundred percent. So how 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 would you advise then people do the recovery side? When you say recover good, what does that mean? How, how does that look? Well, it can be an active recovery, like even if it's a light jog. Okay. No, normally at the club we have a bike, fifteen minutes straight. Okay, okay. But on the on the lowest intensity, but just to loosen up your legs. Yeah, yeah. Thirty yeah. minutes of stretching or rolling. That, yeah. That's a lot, bro. I'm famous stretching or rolling, and just anything else. Even if you need to. Even if you do a very, very, very light session just to get touched and get your legs loose and like nothing yeah. too intense, nothing yeah. intense, just just feel the ball or something very, very light. And eating is part of recovery as well. Eating good is part of recovery <clears throat> as well. Eating good, 100%. Eat your, eat your, the, the more, the better you eat, the better your recovery will be. Because there's no point just, how do you say training imagine i'm training like a madman seven days a week and i'm not eating i won't have nothing inside of me yeah 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 so you need to example you want to recover for the next training session you still can recover on the same day like example i train this morning i'm still recovering to train tomorrow yeah you yeah yeah I mean? so yeah always look forward and then just make sure your body's right to go again and you're doing the right stuff to go again everyone has different recovery routines but i would say that's mine yeah brilliant brilliant I've got a question here from Mitchell again. What's been your proudest moment in football so far? Mm. <sighs> proudest moment. Oh. I would say signing in Germany. Yeah. Signing in Germany. Yeah, signing in Germany, man. Well, because... So after Sweden... Um, I got a draft so for you Borussia went, you Dortmund. From, I don't know if you, you know. From, so you went from Greece to Sweden, and then yeah. tell uh, talk to us about Borussia Dortmund. <sighs> Bro, my agent's got a call. He's like, Dortmund want me in, and I remember. I think it's the fifteenth of June, twenty eighteen. Wow, the date's in his mind. <laughs> I'm I'm belling my brother, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm belling my mom and I said, don't actually want me in. Don't actually want me in that. It was mad, bro. And then um, went there. I was, bro, I was there for time, you know, because then as soon as I, so I, I wasn't able to sign it because they had, when I was there, they had a squad of 32 players, bro. Okay. And so don't that's, a, that's a big squad. That's a big squad, man. It's a huge squad. And then as soon as I, they've told me that, but he said, I'm going to get you another club. Like, I'm not just going to leave you because they had, I had a, I have a long reference from them, like, about, because I need, I said, let me have a reference from you so I have this, like, to show or I have you to refer to. So you've got a reference from, from Dortmund, yeah? Yeah, I've got a reference from them, yeah. Wicked. And then, um, the director, his name's Ingo Poise. Yeah. Of the, of the second team. And then, but I was like, this is, this, this standard is, I said, I'm going to Germany. I'm going to like one of the best clubs like in Germany. It's a, it's a massive yeah. step up in Sweden, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and, I, and I said, um, I played a few games for them. Um, there was one game. The the manager that had me, he actually coached in Huddersfield. Was it in November? He got sacked. November he got sacked from Huddersfield, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So I can't remember his name, but I know Jan, you're talking Jan, about Jan Sievert, German. See. Yeah, see so he was at Borussia Dortmund when you was there. Yeah, he he coached me, bro. That's that's the oh. crazy thing about it. And then one of my friends signed for Huddersfield a year later. He was with me as well. Um, 
so that when they told me that um, the squad is too huge and a lot, I'll be seeing a lot of their players go. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've gone the next week. A guy's gone to Panathinaikos. A guy's gone to Willem in Holland. Another guy's gone to Lithuania. Another guy's that players were going. So you yeah. could tell the squad was too huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was like, okay, but these lot are going to like it's, <coughs> the quality they have is is something else, bro. We had a few guys that played for German Germany under twenties or under under nineteens, under twenty ones that. The standard was good. We had another English guy there who came from Man City called Denzel Boadu. He okay. played for Arsenal also before and Man City. Then he moved to Dortmund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, same age as me. Um, I think he's with no he's with no club now as well, boy. That's that's the shocking thing about it. Yeah. See how this but works in football, man. He was he's talented, man. I don't know how he's with no club, but look from being at such a huge club to being at no club, like football was football's ruthless. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, boy, it was a crazy experience. And then I ended up signing for Mannheim that December. That December, because I couldn't sign. Because I, I stayed with them into the, I believe, into the 2018-19 season. Okay. So I couldn't sign until a River Club until December to come back for the second half of the season. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I went... Um, on a training session with Mannheim, how was it? I went on the first day. Well, the first day, my, my, one of my close friends were, came as well, Reese Nelson, plays for Arsenal. Oh, so what, you and Reese are friends, yeah? Is that his, yeah. Is that his top in the, behind you there? Yeah, that's, that's Reese's top still, yeah. Hey, man like Reese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but man. he came to watch my session. I believe he had a day off that day. Came to watch my session. Um, it was good. Like, I, I didn't know the players, so I just played my game. So, I was like, okay. He told me what I need to do, but I like, okay, this and that. Because, bro, he plays for Arsenal. Like, I have to... It's not like I have to listen to him, but... Yeah, I yeah, have yeah. to take some of the advice, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's one of my, my guys telling me for my own good. So, um, okay, next session. Like, as the days are going on, I was just playing better. I was just playing better as the days went on. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, the, the, it's, it went a bit... Can you speak again now? Can you let's hear me, yeah? It's, let's see if it's caught up. Yeah, it seems to have caught back up. What was you saying about Reese Nelson? Because it was going a bit weird. Yeah, I was saying... Um, um, what was and it? He went to your session. Yeah, when he came to my... Yeah, he went to my yeah, session. And you and had to after. listen to him or something. Yeah, well, he was telling me that, OK, Daniel, maybe you should do this better or... Maybe should make more runs or just little, little, little improvements that I yeah. could have done. That's my first session with, my, with Mannheim, and then. Okay. But as the days went on, bro, I was, I doing, was killing, and bits. I was playing out of position, out of position. The coach said, "Danny, I want to see you in the midfield." I was like, "What midfield? <laughs> well, I've, set, I've never played in the center midfield." Mid. Yeah, center mid. Hey, <laughs> he's here. But I was like. I've, I've never played in the midfield, but okay. I've never played in the midfield, but okay. And then, bro, I don't know. I was madness. And then on my fourth session at the side, we had all the staff, like all the top people from the club, like yeah, directors, yeah. everything, like chairman, everything on the side. That session, I was, that's when I knew, okay, yeah, I'm staying here. Like, I'm signing here for uh, sure. Wicked. And that's like, and then I said, yeah, Daniel, we need to sign you. Like, don't go anywhere else. Because my agent um, had interest from other clubs in Germany. But he said, don't get anywhere else. We have a plan for you. Like, the manager wants you. want you to start everything. I could see the manager want, wanted me as well. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Then it was, it was then after Reese even came to one of my games, I believe it was my home debut he came to. Okay. Yeah, my home debut. Well, I came, I believe I had an injury before my first game, so I missed a few games. Yeah. I had a groin injury. I had a groin injury. So that had me up for a while. And then um, played my first game, came to my first game. But I came on 45 half time. Well, the balls come, I didn't even say me the video. The balls come from like this side, like the corner side. God knows. I've, <laughs> 
I've touched it over me <laughs> and I've volleyed it, bro, and it's hit the bar. I was like, I was oh. like, this is me making my mark if I scored. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you was going to say hit the bar yeah, and went boy. in, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'm but gutted I'll show you, for you. I seen, I seen the video. It, yeah. it was um, that's what I was like. Everyone's like, okay, this guy just entered and he's doing his thing. Like, they've seen me playing like a few friendlies that we had, but not a crowd like that. I've touched it, bro. I've hit. It's like it's in the it's on the brink of going. It's like that. Uh, I was like, wow, I was. Then I was oh. just. I just had a good, good first impression. You know what I'm saying? I gave a good first impression. He was even, he was at my side. I remember he was telling me, because um, the stand was there, so I was on the right side. So he was telling me, Daniel, keep making those runs that like, these defenders won't catch me. Who, Reese Nelson was saying that? Yeah, they couldn't live okay. with me that game, bro. They yeah. couldn't live with me that game. And I was, to me, I wasn't as fit as I couldn't be because I was coming back from injury. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I was like, okay, let me, let me just keep trying to make these runs, trying to make these runs. And, and then I remember we were losing 2-0. And then we came back 2-2, two, two, bro. We came back 2-2, two, two, man. But I believe, like, I had, I, had, I had a good impact in the first game, man. I had a good impact for my first game. Yeah. Um, like, I left a good impression. And like, I remember I was entering towards the, towards the change, man. Like, these little kids will come to me. Will come to me man. It was mad. <laughs> it was mad, bro. It was mad. It was mad. I've, I've yeah. noticed, Daniel, yeah, you've, you've said first impression a lot on this podcast. I'm guessing that's quite important to you of, of making that good first impression. Do you think that's important in football then? Yeah, definitely, man, because ugh, imagine you don't leave a first impression. Imagine you're going on trial with a club yeah. like, and you don't leave a good first impression. That, that impression or how do you say, the things that you do in that session... Yeah. can decide whether you're there next session. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't go on trial and say, okay, let me play. Let me just do what I can. Let me be... You can't be your normal self. You have to be better than what they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you have, you have to leave a good... Even if it's not your best that you know you can do, leave a good impression. So they say, okay, Daniel, see you in the morning tomorrow or something like that. Okay, yeah, you know, yeah. okay, this guy wants to see me tomorrow. Let me even come back better. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, so yeah, I think that's key, man. Hundred percent. It's important that they see something in you, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. They need to see that. Okay, this guy can potentially play in our team, or this guy can improve our team. So yeah, that's one thing to to do. Hundred percent. Wicked, wicked. Um, last question from um the Ripple Way boys is from Luke, and he says, yeah. "What sports icon?" has influenced you the most? I think I know who you're going to say from what you've said so far, but... Ronaldo, man. Yeah, yeah. For his yeah. work ethic, his hard work, his drive, his determination, he's always looking to become better. The guy's not normal, man. And that's, that's what kind of that drives me like, every day, like, to try to be just the best version that I can, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, when, when... I would say that's, that's the guy that's been the most influential... That's made me say, okay, I need, I need to go get it. You know what I mean? So, 100%. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, it's the same with Ronaldo. Like, all through lockdown, man's been going in, in, in. Bro, and... did he, he even got better results than he did before before the lockdown, bro. Yeah. That's how you know. How, how, in lockdown, are you, are you getting better results when you're coming back? Like? <laughs> <laughs> is, that even, is that even possible? <laughs> yeah, Ronaldo's a machine. And for me personally, I know I'm not going to get into the Messi versus Ronaldo sort of, debate here now mm-hmm. but for me Ronaldo is a great example if I'm Mike's son's growing up I'm showing him Ronaldo mm-hmm. do you know what I mean because I'm like 100%. if you want to be the best version of yourself this is a guy that you can look at and see that man is always pushing you've heard about it before games after games all of those extra always. sessions man always 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 and I believe like that's what that's what separates him from from the rest, man. That's what makes him stand out, hundred percent, hundred percent. Wicked, wicked. So, what's next then for um for Daniel? So, what is it for next season? You're gonna try and get the move to this new club, and yeah, um... should, should be happening. Hopefully, um, 
this this virus thing has slow slow down some things yeah. in it because yeah of course I can imagine I was supposed to sign a pre contract for one club in April so that's like a couple months ago that's when the virus after the virus started so yeah yeah um but now that I, my agent has said he has a few other a options a few other things coming that's 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 on hold at the moment that's on okay. hold okay okay but okay. it's still a, it's still an option but my like I said to everyone bro. My target of goals is 15 goals for next season. Remember that. Yeah, 15, <laughs> yeah. Oi, hey, we're going to be keeping the tabs Saturday. on you at Views, you know. We're going to be keeping every, tabs on <laughs> Every Saturday, um, since lockdown, bro, I've been doing shooting with my trainer, innit? Yeah, That's yeah. why I said. I, I'm not missing a shooting session. Like, sometimes on a Friday, I'll be, I'll be slumped. But I said, I have to get up for Saturday for shooting that. Yeah, so yeah. it shows that I'm working towards my goal that I've Your kind of set, you know what I mean? That you've set yourself, of course. Yeah. And what goals have you set yourself in terms of where you want to play? Like, what level, what country? Well, first I want to play Bundesliga in Germany, then come yeah. back to England. Okay. So you want to make a little name for yourself in Bundesliga I, first? I need, it's, bro, there's no yes on it's a, it's a for sure. I have to make my, my name known in Germany, man. I have to. We in can. Bundesliga, like, it's, it's for sure. It's, a, it's by force. That's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So I have to do what I can in it, so I just have to put hundred percent in whatever I do. But you know, it's possible because there's a few men that have done it, and I know yeah, well, Sancho's your your boy as well, isn't he? Yeah, but he's done. He, I think he paved the way, like for for players to come to Germany, and that's why German clubs are so interested in the English players now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's 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 one of my goals. Um. Obviously, playing back in England would be great. Um, but as until then, then just got to keep working on my goal for next season and yeah, then yeah. just keep pushing from there. Like, I don't like... Example, I say, OK, let me get 20 goals for the next three seasons. I don't know how next season is going to be, so I, I cannot be planning for two, three seasons ahead. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that, man. Like, I have to work on now or work in the near future and then set targets for maybe six months or... You know what I mean? So, yeah. What's been, um, so far, out of the three countries that you've played in, with being Greece, Sweden and Germany, what's yeah. been, the, what's been your, your favourite country to play in and why? Germany. It's Germany, yeah. man. The standard of the football there, bro. Is, is high. <sighs> it's high. And the training we do. To be fair, in terms of training-wise... Yeah. I would say Greece was kind of create like the training that they do is that is very thought through, you know what I'm saying? It's creative. Okay, okay. Like, That's jumps, interesting to hear. Pops, a lot of this and that. Like, yeah, yeah. Lots, lots of shops of that I like, but 100% because they use like, they use all the equipment to the fullest, you know what I mean? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Like, um, and Germany, Germany, the training was very good as well, man. It was very good as well. But to actually like, play, like, play my games, and it's, it's got to be Germany, man. It's got to be Germany. See, it's got to be Germany. So how, I've got to ask, man, because how, how good is Jaden Sancho then? Because you're talking about Germany being like a really high standard, even when you was at Borussia Dortmund and, and players are just like such a big squad and... and yeah. um. Like he is, he is proper standing out at the moment in in this in this Bundesliga. Like, well, he, he how brings good, something how good different, he? man. He, he brings something different because there's not a lot of players like him. Okay, you know what I mean, like, with the way he moves, his flair, his dribbling. Like, yeah, yeah. He's just something different. Like, I believe in what he does. He's a step ahead of of these defenders. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And maybe he's too he's too sharp. He's too quick for them, which which they cannot. Li- Germany, they love pace. They cannot live with pace, the defenders. Yeah, yeah, they cannot yeah. live with pace. Like, that's that's one key aspect in Germany as well. But also tactically as well, which is a number one key point in Germany, that's something that he has as well. Like, knowing where to move, no wonder he's got, um, I believe he's got, how many goals this season? I think 16 goals got, a season. He's got like so 16, 18 goals or something. A lot of that is something. to do with tactically, like, yeah, where, where he's positioned himself to get those goals or 
the yeah. move he has to make. You know what I mean? So I believe developing in that way has pushed him to where he is right now, man. It's only going to get back better. And do you lot push each other? So is there still that supportive network and there between the two of you sort of thing? Yeah, man. Like, even um, to just do as, as much as we can and play at the highest level possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, before games, we just have a luck. Um, make sure we're doing well, do our best in whatever we do, training within the week, focus, not get distractions, like, We'll be clubbing or whatever too much. That like just just stay tunnel vision and do do what you gotta do first. Uh, priorities first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wicked, wicked. So I'm gonna ask you a few more questions before we wrap up, man. I've really enjoyed this so far. Um, yeah, go on, bro. So basically, as you know, bro, do you mind if I turn on my light? Yeah, man, go for it. Because looking the, a bit the, dark here, the, the, yeah. I know it's changed now. The way. <laughs> It was light when we started talking, boy. <laughs> that better, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was light when we first started talking and <laughs> it's gone dark now. <laughs> so so this part is just called advice from a pro. So yeah. I'm just gonna ask you a few questions, get a few scenarios from you, just for you to give some advice on the younger players that are may be facing some of these challenges so yeah. um there's a there's a guy that i speak to he's a young player from crystal palace his name's alpha yeah. and he asked like what was the most difficult decision that you had to make in football that helped you get to where you are now moving aboard 100 percent. okay moving aboard yeah i know a lot of friends that don't want to move aboard because their family or friends are not coming with them yeah yeah but I believe you have to step out of your comfort zone and just, it's a risk. It was a risk me going aboard, but it's a risk that you have to take to succeed. Like it was also a risk um, when, when Ronaldo moved from Madeira to Lisbon yeah, to, play yeah. for, to play for Sporting. Like, yeah. I believe every footballer has taken risks. Yeah, and that's yeah. what they're, especially the ones at the top, that's what they are where they are today. So I believe you get step out of your comfort zone and, your 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 mum or your dad or your boys from from the ends are not gonna give you that contract. It's it's the club that's gonna give you the contract. So you have to take risk and do what's best for you. Like it will benefit your family and your friends once you take that risk and hopefully succeed. You know what I mean? So yeah, you have yeah. to think of the bigger picture and not think of like that moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, cool, wicked man. That's that's brilliant to hear. Um, Another per another question is from a young footballer from Charlton. It's called yeah. Josh, and this is, I think, a brilliant question. Um, what was it like when your friends were going out playing and stuff like that? How did you manage that situation? Was you out going playing out with your friends? And because I've already asked you, you said you don't even play FIFA and stuff. So what yeah. what was that? What well, was that? Like? I believe that, like here and there. Like, obviously, a FIFA here and there is good, but yeah. not too much, man, because you can get... It's something that you can stay addicted to, like, all day, like, just playing FIFA. Like, like once I get get on FIFA sometimes, I'm, I'm on it. Like, okay, I've lost this game. I need to win the next game, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> but yeah. I believe, like, you can use your time developing on, on stuff of your own game than just playing a video game all day, you know what I mean? Or using the... If you spend an hour playing FIFA, use two hours or three hours to work on yourself. You know what I mean? So yeah. And what about when your friends are going out? You know, they're going out partying well, or a lot of time I've said no. You know. Yeah. Nah, I'm not, yeah, a lot of times I've said no, and like a lot of them see why I say no. Yeah, yeah. So they they understand. It is they know. Like even when you say, okay, Daniel, go out. Let's go for go for some food or something. But if it's a bit out of my area, and I think. Nah, let me stay here and do something for myself. Like, yeah, that can yeah. be put on hold. Like, someone's you can never, how do you say, it? like, a football career is never sure. Like, I can always go for food, yeah, true. But a football career is never, uh, never sure. Like, if you don't do one thing today, like, tomorrow it might affect you badly, or you can say, oh, rather, and you'll keep dragging it. Example, I say, okay, let me train today. My friend says, go for food, I'll go for food. Okay, let me train tomorrow. 
And then my friend says, let's go shopping. I'll go shopping. Like, you're just dragging the days. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have to make use of every every minute that you have in your day and just maximise it to improve on yourself. I, I'm not saying don't go out and club or party or whatever, but um, how do you say it? Um, be controlled with it. Be disciplined. Yeah, yeah, like, no, yeah. No balance, well isn't men. it? Balance is yeah. key. Have the balance, 100%. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Um, what's the toughest thing that you've been through in football that you've managed to overcome? Uh, injury. Okay. I would say 100%. Now, as soon as I had in Greece, played four games. That was when I was at my hottest as well. And then um, got an ankle injury. Like, a guy's just come through me. Ridiculous! No intention to get the ball, <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like, like I was, bro, I was, I, I was crying that pain. Oh jeez! Got taken to the, got taken to the ambulance, and then so that like, you won't be. So it was, I believe it was October. You won't be playing until December or January. So I was oh. like, this, like, but I was. Then I was recovering quickly, so I was working it slowly, and then it was getting better. And then I mean that was a, that was one of the toughest period. But I was saying, okay, it's it's two three months, but it's only two three months that I can use for myself, like, so I can get not used to getting injuries and recovering from it. But I can, if I get injury, I know how to deal with it. Hey, we you know what I mean, we kid. So like. Example, you're in a situation, but you know how to deal with that situation again. So if you're in that situation next time, you won't react to it as bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Um, at first, mm-hmm. I was thinking, okay, okay, like this, this injury is mad. But as I got on, I was like, nah, this is going to be fine. I'm just need to give me more time to prepare and make myself stronger and just come back better. So, yeah, yeah that was yeah, it, yeah. really. Brilliant. So you're basically just using that trying to take some positive from it so that you can you're just basically learning from that process so that if it happens again you're better equipped to deal with it you know what your recovery needs to be and how you need to handle it and and i would say there's always a positive and a negative situation though yeah 100 percent well even there was um how can i say in sweden one time (sighs) well i played my first game got mine in the match Second game scored. So I came there and break. So scored a man of the match first game. Second game scored. I believe they were league leaders as well. Break. Came back, scored. Gaffers changed. Yeah. Managers changed. Well, you won't believe it. I did not start a game until the last game of the season again. No way. And in the last game of the season, I assisted them. We won that game 2-1. I assisted them. I was starting that game, bro. And then um, our captain said, yeah, this is why you're in our team today, blah, blah, this and that. Because like, he knows, they're not, some players know my quality there. But Yeah, yeah. I, but I, I'm just as confused as you were when I, when I didn't, didn't, didn't start um, until the end of the season again. But I could not believe it. So how did you but deal like, with okay, how no did problem, you, like how did you deal with that then Daniel like not just, we're knowing really, where you should be playing but you weren't playing how how did you deal with that? Well, every time I just I just stepped up my training man. Yeah, and he's coming to me after training like like Daniel. Ooh, like he surprised the way I was coming back in session. Like Daniel you had a great session. You had a great this. You had a great that. But you had a great that. But you're not starting me. But yeah. But, I, but you I didn't let that affect you, though. You continued to keep working. All, man. And then that following year, I did end up going on trial at Dortmund. So I was like, okay. Imagine I was playing all those games and, yeah. you know, things can change. Maybe I won't go, go there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe course, it can lead yeah. me somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. You just don't know Maybe what... I would have been like, I'm playing all these games. Let me accept another year that I've been offered. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So in the end, it worked as my favour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you try to look at it like that, but that's what I'm saying. Look at a positive in every negative situation. And you said that at the beginning of this, actually, that sometimes a situation that seems like it's bad might end up being good for you. 
Yeah, hundred percent, man. Even a lot of things, I've, a lot of videos I've been watching that like, recently. I see guys saying they've been rejected for this, rejected for that. Yeah. But like they're at a higher position than they would have been if they were there. So yeah, it sometimes works in your favor, man, for sure. I have a question here as well um, from Justin from Ripple Way, and he says, "Have you ever felt like quitting?" Never, man. Never. 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 Ever. Is like, that because I know is, some people it's either because they're impatient or the opportunity is not coming. Yeah. But like example, someone's like if example school, like when I was at school and I went to college, I, I never had that, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it no way. Like, I just have to try and make a positive out of this situation, just do my years at college, um, keep playing and then hopefully something will come at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't feel like that unless you just won't have any motivation to keep going and persevering. And if you're thinking of like, okay, let me let me quit. Like, I I will say that's weak-minded in my in my in my in my term because yeah, if it's something you really want, you will never quit. Okay, you never quit. Like you go until until you've known that even if you don't get it, you tried your absolute best to do what you can to try and get it. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So at least if you quit, you said, I put 250% into it, but I didn't come up with anything. But maybe like, maybe, maybe God doesn't want this for you. Maybe God wants something else for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, yeah it, it really depends, man. It really depends. You just have to look at it in a different way, man. Wicked, wicked. So what advice would you give to a, a young Daniel growing up now what advice so you're still young yourself you know what I mean you're only 23 a younger Daniel <laughs> yeah younger Daniel yeah <laughs> but I would say um, even if you're playing at a low level Sunday league or whatever play your best um, play every game like it's your last game you don't know who's watching give 100% always look to learn like be all airs Always wanna, always wanna listen to what people have to say to you. Okay. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's something I kind of wasn't when I was younger. But I was, but I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. ask questions also. I didn't ask a lot of questions when I was younger. Ask questions because, example, you play a game, you don't just, example, players or younger players, you know, they play a game. Okay, in the training we go home. Yeah. I believe play a game. If you don't, if you feel you've done good, still ask questions like, coach, what could I've done better? Like, what do I need to work on? Like. Always want to know, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and be open minded and be outgoing to step out your comfort zone, like maybe to go play a board or go play somewhere else or um, do other things like that might take you out of your comfort zone because it's not always good to be comfortable. Yeah, it's not yeah. good to be comfortable because when, <laughs> when you're comfortable, boy, it's a dangerous place, though. I can't <laughs> lie. <laughs> That's a dangerous Like, I'm talking comfortable in terms of. Like okay, I'm at, I'm I'm playing Sunday League. Let me stay here and just see what happens. Like maybe if you go out your comfort zone and look for opportunity or speak to people yeah, or ask yeah. questions, you'll get answers that you were looking for. But yeah. you never get those answers if you don't ask them questions or step out your your zone. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh so, yeah, man. Wicked. I love that. Love that end to the end to the show, man. That's a brilliant end. <laughs> I've as I said it, before, man. I really enjoyed. I think you're a great character. And I think this show, what I want this show to be is to meet people like you, to get the insight to what you've been through so yeah. that the younger player watching can, can really be inspired, man, and motivated to, to believe that they can make it and also just to give them the tools. And I think that you've, you've given us a lot of gems in, in, this, in this interview because, and one thing, I, as I said, just watching you, I, I can see it already with the work rate and, and yeah. everything that you've, you've talked about, you know, first impressions and all of that is, is brilliant, man. So I thank you for coming on. I thank you for giving me the well, opportunity to speak. There's one more point you. that I want to give to these younger people. Go on, man. So Surra- Surround yourself with the right people. Yeah. Surround yourself with like people that want to push you or motivate you or give you that edge to become better. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. don't surround yourself with people that won't, like lift you up or help you know what I mean surround yeah. yourself with positive people always yeah yeah wicked wicked man where where, where can they man. find you bro what's your Twitter Instagram. and your Instagram 
Instagram, well, Instagram, I'm there. I'll, I'll sh- answer any questions or give any advice. I'm there. Let them know. Yeah, yeah, wicked. I'll put your, I'll put his name up on the screen for you, and it would also be in the description for all of you listeners and people viewing. Thank you. If you are new to the channel, you enjoyed. Please subscribe to the channel. Please pass about and share with your friends. Retweet all of that stuff, people. Um, and no. thank you very much, man. <laughs> this is You're Daniel, welcome. and I'm Semps. This is Views from Inside, and we're out, people. Until next time, bless. Yeah, boy, take care. Bless.